Okay, and welcome back. We're here for another uh, solution for the upcoming chapter test. Uh, we're working on problems from section 4.3 this time, and this is question number six on the list that I gave you. So question number six says, express log base three of 81 equal to four. Express this in exponential form exponential form. So here what we see is a log with a base of 3 and one of the key things to remember is that that base is going to be the base for our exponential form. So we can translate this right over by taking this base making it that new base of an exponential. So there's going to be a power here and there's going to be something here. Okay, so what is the power? So well, the basic form of this is 3 to this power equals this argument. So 3 to the fourth is 81. Okay? Alrighty, so that's it. That's the entire exponential form. So this is the solution to question 6. There's not a whole lot to it. Okay, so the next question is this one, it's number seven on the test problems list. It says express 10 to the negative first, which of course is equal to 1 tenth. Express this in logarithmic form. So this is the exact, uh, exact problem up above with different numbers. We're just trying to convert it in the other direction. Okay, so we're just gonna say, hey, this is the same as these two things are the same. Uh, that's what this arrow means. And just like before, we're looking at this exponential and we're looking at its base, which is 10. That's going to be the base of our logarithm over here. So log base 10. The power, if we remember from the second question or the first question up here, the power is actually the result of this logarithm. And the result of this exponential is the input to our logarithm. Okay, If we think about this in the other direction, 10 to the negative first equals 1 tenth. Right? I like to draw that sort of circle there. Start at the base, go over to the result, come back to the argument. That gives you the exponential form. And that's exactly what we've got over here on the left for the exponential form. Okay, and that's it. The next question. Yeah. Uh, all right, the next question, eight, says solve for x. And there's two pieces to it. So log base x. We don't know the base of 16 is 4. So right away when I see a question like this I think let's translate it into the exponential form because because logarithms give me the heebie-jeebies. They just do. So x to the fourth is 16. Okay, x to the fourth is 16. That's the equivalent exponential form. And this, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Um, this I, I can sort of figure out. I know my powers of, of things pretty well, so this means that 2 is x. 2 to the 4th, right? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Okay, so, so I think that's number 8 there. And again, I like to work in these exponentials because I, I know my powers better than I know my logarithms. Right, so I sometimes just translate over and then think about perfect powers. It's like this one I know, some number to the fourth is 16. That's two, because two times two times two times two is 16. Okay, part B of question eight is solve this one, log base 10 of x is negative 3. 
just like in 8 where we were solving for x, where we were solving for x, that's our final answer. We're solving for x here as well. Um, so again, we're going to translate this, at least I will, into exponential form, and that's actually just going to pop out our answer. So this is translated into exponential form, 10 to the negative third. Um, 10 to the negative third is x. So in terms of our final answer for b here, it's that. And what is that? Well, that's 1 over 10 to the third, which is 1 thousandth. So as a decimal, that's actually 0 0.001. Um, right, so what I'm asking you to translate into exponential form, this is your final result. When I'm asking you to put it in logarithmic form, this is your final result. When I'm asking you to solve for something, I, I want to know what that something is. So, so this, this is our final answer. Okay, that's it for that question. So for question nine, we're almost running out of room here. It says to graph log base two of x, and I put parentheses around this x because that's the only thing we're plugging into logarithm, base two. And then we're adding to the logarithm Okay. After it's been evaluated at x, we're adding to that 2. All right, so I need to clear up some space to do this. This is still 4.3. So the, just like before, when graphing anything else, we're going to be going to be making a table of values and just plotting it like that. A key thing to remember with logarithms is that you can't plug in negatives and you can't plug in zero because that, that doesn't make sense in the exponential sense. So if I, if I say log base 2 of 0 and I tried to calculate that, what is that? Well, that this would mean that 2 to some power is 0. But there's no such number that gives us that. There is no number that does that. Likewise, if I plugged in a negative number here, right, not zero, but I plugged in like negative one, we'd be asking when we tried to evaluate this, what number, when I take two to that number, gives us a negative number like negative one? There is no such number. Two to the two to any power is positive. It's always a positive number. So in logarithms, when you're making your table, you're only plugging in positive numbers, no negatives. So let's just make a few. Log base 2 of x, and I'm going to go ahead and add 2 as well. Uh, my suggestion here is pick perfect powers of the base for logarithms. So I'm going to pick 2 to the 0th, that's 1. I'm going to pick 2 to the 1st, that's 2. 2 squared, that's 4. 2 to the 3rd, that's 8, and I might even go so far as to do 2 to the 4th, which is 16. You could go higher if you want, but this would be sufficient for a, a, an accurate graph. Um, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to do small powers of 2 as well. 2 to the negative 1st, that's 1 half. 2 to the negative 2, that's 1 fourth. Okay. You could pick more. This is sufficient for a good graph. I remember when I was teaching this in the lectures, um, telling you to do the same thing. Why did I pick perfect powers of 2? That's because when you plug in a power of 2 to the logarithm, base 2, what is the result? It's just the power. Okay. So that's true for any base. If I take log base b and I plug in a power of that base, I always get out x, the power itself. So these values for our table are extremely easy to calculate, extremely. Log base 2 of 2 to the 0 is 0, plus 2 gives us 2. Log base 2 of 2 to the 1st 
is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Log base 2 of 2 to the second is 2. Plus 2 is 4. We see this nice little thing here. 2, 3, 4. What do you think the next one's going to be? <laughs> Log base 2 of 2 to the third is 3. It's just the power. 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, now this is where it gets a little different because I switched sort of from positives to negatives. So log base 2 of 2 to the negative first is negative 1. That's just the power. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Log base 2 of 2 to the negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Okay, and this would keep going. But this is a, this is a sufficient set. So it looks like my inputs go all the way up to 8. We'll say this is 8 here. That's 2 to the third. So that makes this 4. That's 2 squared. That makes this 2. That makes this 1. And then we've got 1 half, which is 2 to the negative first, and 1 fourth, which is 2 to the negative second. So these are the x values that I plugged in up here. And my y values are here. Uh, so it goes up to 5, so this will be 5. And we need to go down to 0, so maybe I'll do this. Maybe I will. Slide this down just a little bit, because we don't need any of those negative values here. So we'll make this 5 still. And then here's halfway, so a little bit there, and there, and here, and here. That's okay. So one, two, three, four, and five. So let's just plot the points. So when we plugged in uh, two to the zeroth, that was one, we get two. When we plugged in 2 to the first, that's 2, we get 3. When we plugged in 2 squared, we got 4. 2 to the third, which was 8, we got 5. 2 to the negative first, we got 1. 2 to the negative second, we got 0. So the graph comes up like this. trying my best to connect these smoothly. It's difficult on the computer with the mouse, but that's that's a pretty good graph. There's a vertical asymptote here at 0. So we don't we don't ever like cross over. This graph just keeps getting closer and closer and closer to the y-axis. Okay. But this is this is a good graph. Perfectly acceptable on the test. Yeah, just be looking for like I'd just be looking for, you know, something like this, a table, and then a, a modestly accurate <laughs> graph. Okay? Um, and that is it for question 9 and section 4.3's questions. So I'll be putting up another video here shortly of questions from 4.4. I hope this helps, and I'll see you in the next one.